Hello, this is Jonathan uh, Jardina, and I uh, just wanted to briefly comment on some some of the main points, uh, or what I think are the main points of uh, Jerome Powell's prepared remarks from, I guess now it's been um, it's been a couple of days now, but today today is kind of it's kind of relevant because uh, they did their whole their Fed listens um, meeting today where they where people, members of the Federal Reserve ta uh, listen to business owners and other people in the community who are affected by the policies. But um, I'll just get into what uh, the main purpose. So, okay, so Powell started his um, prepare remarks talking about how the Fed has a 2% inflation goal. Okay, so I'm going to try to play with him saying that oh okay there's a sorry about that federal reserve chair jerome powell announced another increase to interest rates by three quarters of a percentage point in response to record high inflation it's now the third consecutive time that rates have increased at that level. This news conference is about 45 minutes. Good afternoon. My colleagues and I are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down to our 2% goal. We have both the tools we need and the resolve that it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and business. Okay, so you heard him say... It's a two percent goal. One thing I want to bring up, um, which kind of runs counter to some of the other uh, chatter on the, I guess on Twitter and the in the left left wing at the moment about Powell, is that uh, keep in mind that two percent inflation used to not be the goal. All right, Bernanke used to say that you had to aim for two percent just to have stable prices or no or no deflation. Um, kind of like how some people have to aim to be at work five minutes early in order to be there on time or something like that. Um, but being there five minutes early is not the goal. Being there on time is the goal, but you have to aim. Sometimes if the if you're if if the, incl if the inclination is going one way, you have to kind of overshoot or undershoot. So. They shot for two to get to to zero, but the the the, the goal wasn't two. But anyway, so so it's hard for people to say that Powell is some kind of like hardcore sob when it comes to monetary policy. He's 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 the one who changed it so now that two percent is actually the goal, uh, and 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 he's willing to overshoot uh, two percent to get to two. He was at one point willing to over, overshoot. Uh, two percent to get to two percent you know it wasn't it wasn't like that before so, but uh so give him credit for that at least um so anyway the next part and part uh, and in my opinion is around a three minute mark if i could play it for you could get to the Well, anyway, I can't really get to the clip, but around the three-minute mark, he said the labor force participation, the labor force participation rate, showed an uptick in August. Um, I, for, I forget who said it, but someone had, someone had said that the U.S. hasn't been at full employment since World War II, it being mean, meaning I guess the uh, uh, labor force participation being at a really high level. The chart I have of the labor force participation rate does not um, does not include World War II, and actually, and actually, if you could see it, it was um, kind of low in the 50s, and um, and basically, you know, in the, and it's probably be, probably because you had you know a lot of women staying home and not working, so the 60s. It goes up. Uh, in the 70s is it's, it's actually at its highest around right around 2000, 2000 
2001. I wasn't really expecting that, but it's at its highest. But after 2001, it just plummets, you know. And that's and that's that's like a a big deal because if we if we if we are going to cut back on inflation, we need more production, more people working. Um, we it can't it, you know it shouldn't have to all be on the demand side. Uh, and I don't think Powell wants that. But another th- another reason why the labor force participation rate and the fact that now it it went down it went down because of COVID obviously, when it shot back up a lot because you know because after COVID but it's still sixty three, it's still about where it was, um, about where it was in the late seventies. Yes, yeah, it's, it's about where it was in the late seventies. So there's a lot of people. That that just gave up looking for work, or uh, don't feel like they need to work at all. So, or they, or maybe they're working in the underground economy, and and they don't want you to know how they're making their money. But it, but uh, labor force participation rate rate's really low. So that's why um, when we hear that unemployment rate is going up, we, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it because it could be because there's more people uh, joining the labor force, and I and I. I said this in the last video, but the um, the audio wasn't really uh, it wasn't audible, and there's a transcript. YouTube makes a transcript of it, so it's not a total waste. But um, but I'm gonna say it again for the people that rather hear it. Okay, let's assume there's 200 people in the um, in the economy, and half of them aren't working, which is which is a, which would be about uh, kind of well, c- closer to where it was in like the 50s. So like I say, half of them are working. Um, so in uh, out of out of the, um, the 100 people that are actually in the labor force, let's say two are unemployed. So the labor um, the unemployment rate is two percent. Now, let's just assume that four people join the labor force. So now. The uh, denominator is 104, and uh, there's there's still two unemployed. But let's say that out of the the four that join, one of them gets a job. Okay, so you have now you have 99 people working, when before you had 98. All right, but also in the in the the, the in the scenario where the four people join, you have five people unemployed, five people. Out of 104 in the labor force, so the unemployment rate actually goes up to four. In that example, the unemployment rate, and you can crunch the numbers yourself, the unemployment rate actually goes up to 4.8 percent, more than doubles. But in that in that very simple, oversimplified scenario, it's almost all due to people joining the labor force, actually looking for jobs for the first time in a long in a while. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, it's because the, 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 like I said, you, the, your unemployment rate could be a very misleading number, and seeing just small, uh, and you have to you have to look at the the people joining the labor force, and that had, you know that did go up. Um, let's see, 2022, it went up. Um, yeah, well, of course it went up in 2021, and August 2022 it was at 62.4. Um, trying to. This might be easier to do on a, a laptop to actually see. Oh, so yeah, it went up. It went up six January. It was a sixty-two point two, and now it's sixty-two point four. So that could make the that could cause the um, unemployment stats to, stats to look worse. But the flip side is you have more people joining the labor force, which is not a bad thing. And you know, real full employment would be. I mean. Closer to what we had in the um, in like around 2000, which was considered a good time, a time of a time of abundance, and a time uh, yeah, 2000 was considered to be the end of a uh, long economic expansion. So, not a not a, not a bad situation to have a high um, labor force participation, even if it makes the unemployment stats look worse. Okay, at the um, at the seven minute mark, I'm not going to try to play that find that 
find that on uh, the clip. It might be easier on a laptop to point to the exact minute. But uh, the seven minute mark, he says that the 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 projected federal funds rate will be about 4.4 percent at the end of this year. And, and if you're just looking at that from the perspective of like uh, the this 21st century, you might think, wow, that's that's pretty high because it had been at zero for almost 10 years. But um, another chart to look at, since we, since we already brought up the 2000. Ask yourself, what was the federal funds rate um, in the year 2000? A time of prosperity, a time that people like talk about how it was so, you know, prosperous for people. And uh, look at it. Federal funds rate, uh, th this chart does not show like before 2000 for some reason. But uh, it was like, it was at its highest on the whole chart. It was, a six, it was above 6%. Federal funds rate was above six percent. Now uh, Powell says that this um, projected federal funds rate is not the the final the, the final outcome. Like because they they the Fed totally controls the federal funds rate for reasons I won't get into. So they can make it higher, they they can make it lower, but uh, four 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 point four percent is not like historically high. You know, and, and and you you have examples of like good times, economic times, where it was higher than that. And of course, like yeah, no one wants to pay interest, and you know I I understand the the complaints of people who wonder why it can't be like zero or I, or I can't be uh, really you know why or, or even why it can't be negative because if you're a debt, you probably want it to be negative. But uh, just to you know to maybe give a positive spin on it 4.4 is not insanely high by any means and um that's what he's that's what he's jacking it up to or that's what that's what is expected to get jacked up to so um of course he said a lot more than that but i thought those those three points were in his prepare remarks were very interesting and um so um if you agree or don't, maybe, um, or if you even see the exist, notice the existence of this video, drop something in the comments or um, let me know what you think. All right, bye.